One of the coolest things about the Jumper T16 is its great big color screen. That means you've got a lot more real estate to put essential information about your flight, like your battery voltage and so forth, right here on the screen, rather than having to dig into menus to get at it, like you do on some other radios with smaller screens, like the Tyrannus X9D or QX7. In this video, I'm going to show you how to, number one, just get telemetry working on the radio so that you can get all that information from your flight controller. And then we're going to set up widgets and we're just going to customize the heck out of the screen so it shows us exactly what we want to see. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. The screen on the T16 is really customizable and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with this screen even if telemetry is not working on your quadcopter. But the real power of what I'm going to show you in this video is unlocked when your quadcopter is sending telemetry back to the radio. And what is telemetry? The flight controller knows a whole bunch of information about what's going on in the quadcopter. It knows the battery voltage. It might know the number of amps and milliamp hours being pulled and a whole bunch of other the GPS coordinates. Flight controller has all this information about the quadcopter and it can send that information back to the controller via telemetry. That's what telemetry is. Now, in order to have telemetry working, you need to have a receiver that supports telemetry and you need to have set it up when you set up your flight controller. Now, the good news is if you're using Crossfire, which is what we're using in this specific example, Crossfire just telemetry is just a part of it. When you set up the Crossfire receiver, as long as it's working, most of the time telemetry will just be working as well. If you're using FreeSky F port, F port has telemetry sort of built in and generally if you've got F port working, telemetry is also working. But if you're using FreeSky S bus, if an S bus receiver may or may not support telemetry, first of all, not all of them do. For example, the RXSR does support telemetry, the XM plus does not. And with a FreeSky receiver, the smart port wire is separate from the S bus wire. They are two completely separate functions and it's certainly possible that you set up S bus but you didn't set up smart port and telemetry is just not working. So there are a few preconditions to getting telemetry working and we're not gonna dig or dive into all of those. We're just gonna assume at this point that you have a telemetry capable receiver and telemetry is working. And what do you do here on the T16 to then take advantage of that? And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this quadcopter in because to set up telemetry, we have to have the quadcopter powered up and, oh my God, it's so bright. I'm going to put it down on the, whoa, <laughs> I'm going to put it down on the floor so it's not shining in my face. And what I'm about to show you, you only need to do once, but you do need to do it. Here in the radio, I'm going to hold down the model key and I'm going to page to the telemetry screen. Oh, and if you accidentally go too far, you can actually hold down the page key to go back one screen. A lot of people don't know that. And right now, we don't see anything here. But if I go down to Discover New Sensors and click the wheel once, a whole bunch of new sensors will come in. And this is the telemetry data that the flight controller is sending back to the, uh, to the transmitter. So now we've discovered the sensors that the flight controller is making available to us and we're going to go ahead down and highlight stop discovery and we'll stop discovery. The sensors that you see in this list will vary depending on which uh, receiver and flight controller you have. So for example, what you see here is what you'll see with Betaflight on a Crossfire system. Uh, if you have FreeSky, for example, the RXBT sensor, you can see here the value is 14.6 volts. That's obviously my battery voltage. On a FreeSky system, that sensor is called VFAS, VFAS. I don't know why they call it that. So there are going to be some small differences depending on what system you're using, but overall, the stuff you see should be pretty much the same. Like, like here, for example, RQLY and TQLY, RSSS, 2RSS, these are Crossfire specific sensors. So there's going to be a little bit of variation, but Overall, you should see a bunch of sensors come in. If you discover sensors and you only see like one or two sensors come in, probably what it means is that your receiver is sending telemetry, but your flight controller is not hooked up to the receiver. The receiver will typically send the RSSI sensor all by itself, 
but all, all the other sensor data comes from the flight controller and if they're not communicating, then you may not see all these come in. So you'll discover sensors and now you've got all these sensors. Now, what can we do with them? The first thing I like to do is put some widgets here in the top bar and I'm gonna hold down the telemetry key and then I'm going to page to user interface and I'm gonna scroll down to top bar setup and I can put one, two, three, four values here. And here I wanna select the value widget, which can then hold a telemetry value conveniently right here at the top of the screen. So I'm gonna highlight one of the positions, I'm gonna click the wheel, and I'm gonna roll the wheel to value. I'm gonna click again, and I'm gonna choose the source. And I believe if I long press on source, yes, fantastic, I got a list here, and I'm gonna look for telemetry. Now, if you don't see telemetry there, it means that you didn't go do the discover sensors thing that I showed you earlier in the video. If you don't have any telemetry sensors, you won't see telemetry in this list. And the telemetry value that I want here, let's just start with my battery voltage, which for crossfire is RxBT. There we go. RxBT. You're going to notice that there's an RxBT minus and an RxBT plus. The minus and plus versions of the telemetry sensors hold the lowest and highest value that the radio has seen. We don't care, we don't want, we don't just wanna see RxBT. So we'll leave that there. We'll back out and right here conveniently, RxBT is right here, very convenient, very nice. And how about we put um, milliamp hours, which I believe Crossfire stores as kappa capacity Yeah, okay. So I've got my battery, I've got my milliamp hours, and I've got my LQ right here. And you could put any other values that you would like to see. But that's not all the radio can do. It can also adjust its main screen. And we're gonna do that again by holding down the telemetry key. And here we've got main view one. And in fact, you can set up multiple main view screens and page between them. We'll just set up the first one. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose which layout I want. Uh, and I personally like the two column layout. That's how I like it to be. Um, you can do multiple different layouts. And I'm gonna do setup widgets and here I can put a different widget in each of these positions. And so for example, what I like to see here is the outputs, the stick positions. Outputs, good. And for here, and here we'll put the model image, which I don't have an image loaded for this model, but uh, it's got the model name and that'll help me remember which model I've got loaded. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, I can check my channels very easily. Yeah, that's a great little setup. That's, I could see myself working with that. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. And we're getting close to the end of me setting this radio up to be my daily driver. I've got a playlist linked in the video description where I go through all the steps from unboxing the radio to something you need to do when you first get the radio that a lot of people overlook. And then all of the steps of setting the radio up, creating the models, binding, everything I've gone through to get to this state that we're in right now. If you've got a Jumper T16, check out that playlist. Look for any new information. I hope there's a lot of new information there. And if you're thinking about getting a Jumper T16, there's, this radio has gotten so popular, a lot of people are thinking of switching from other radios to the T16, but they're maybe a little bit worried about what is OpenTX and what do you have to go through? You can check those videos out and see. Well, it's kind of a lot. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but hopefully the videos will make it as easy as possible. That's going to do it for this video, though. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking to pick up a Jumper T16, there's links in the video description. They are affiliate links, and that's one of the ways that you can help make what I do possible by using those affiliate links. That's going to do it. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.